In this video, I'm, I want to try a couple examples where we're actually factoring out part of the common factor that's a binomial. So here in the first example, we're going to factor x squared times the quantity 2x plus y minus y times the quantity 2x plus y. So when I'm looking for common factors, I'm looking for any factor that both of these guys have in common. Uh, now, the first term here has an x, and in fact has an x squared, but the second term here doesn't have just a factor of x. Yes, it's got an x as, as far as the 2x plus y, but the 2x plus y, the whole thing is a factor of the second term, not just the x. So I've got my eye on this giant term and this giant term, and I'm looking for common factors. Um, the second term has a y as a factor, but the first term does not. The only thing I see in common uh, between both of these guys is actually they both have a 2x plus y as one of their factors. So we can actually factor that out, 2x plus y, and then as far as what's left over, we're going to have two terms left over just like we had when we started but we're gonna have to ask ourselves 2x plus y times what would give us x squared times 2x plus y? Well, obviously that answer is 2x plus y times x squared. The x squared is the term that's remaining once we pull out the 2x plus y here. And for the second term, the y would be left after we pull out the 2x plus y. And so I know this is correct because if I suddenly change my mind, and I wanted to take this term here and distribute it back through for whatever reason, I would be right back where I started. And so I'm sure that we did, in fact, factor this guy correctly. So this would be your final answer. We factor this guy using the GCF. All right, and let's do one more. Here we have 5x squared y, I'm sorry, 5x squared times xy minus 1 plus 10x times xy minus 1. So again, if we're looking for a common factor, um, let me look at the coefficients first, the five and the 10. Five would be the GCF between five and 10. The first term has a factor of x squared and the second term has a factor of x. So there's at least an x that's common to both of those. Now, how many x's can I factor out? Well, if you remember from our previous examples, we take the uh, term that has the smallest exponent, so x to the first. That's all this guy has available to factor out. He doesn't have any more than just a single x, so that's the most that's common to both of these guys. And when you look at the two terms, they both have an x, y minus 1 as a factor grouped together in parentheses. So that's a common factor, and we can pull that out and you'd have an x, y minus one. And then we have to see, okay, once those three terms are factored out, what's remaining from the original two terms? Well, you'll still have two terms, but what will your new two terms be? Well, the five has been factored out, and so five times one is five. x times what would give us x squared? Well, we just have an x. And x, y minus one times what would give us an x, y minus one. We just have a times one, so we'll just leave it x. This is a plus, then this will stay a plus here. Five times what gives you 10? We just have a two. And x times what would give us x? That's just times one, but I, I don't really need to write the times one because two times one is still two. And x, y minus one times what would give us x, y minus one? Well, again, times one. So we're done. Our final answer would be 5x times xy minus 1. Those were the common factors that we pulled out, and times x plus 2. And so we've created a product of uh, this original polynomial that we had up here, and, uh, and so we're done. Um, this is a factored uh, form for this original uh, expression that we had up here. So anyways, that's how we factor using GCFs.